hello there, let's get down to business. We ain't screwing around. Today I wanna to talk about my top 10 easy peasy plants. I'm not talking about your typical easy care plants that you'll see in a list if you Google it. There's no pothos here, there's no peace lily here, no cacti or succulents, that's basically cheating. Today I'm going to choose 10 plants from my own collection. Easy care plants that you can find and take care of easily. All of the plants in my home are indirect light plants. I don't have any plants that require direct sun because I cannot depend on the leal weather of northern <laughs> France for, you know, dependable amounts of sun. I always choose plants based on my environment and that means I typically go for plants that are, you know, low light plants or plants that do better in medium light but will thrive in really bright indirect light. So that includes Hoyas and begonias and you know, all my favorites. So just assume that all of these plants don't require direct sun. Some of them do okay in low light. Some of them need medium to very bright indirect light. This is Begonia Comte de Miribel. Uh, that, I just said that in the worst way possible. Yeah, Comte de Miribel. We're sorry, all circuits are busy. I can barely speak English today, let alone French. Miribel, Miribel. This is Begonia Comte de Miribel, or uh, commonly known as Begonia Tamaya. It's just, it's the easiest Begonia I've ever had to take care of. I've had this for two or three years now, I can't remember. It's a Begonia, but it does really well in regular household humidity. The leaves do not turn brown and crispy when the humidity levels drop in the summertime here. When I found it, it was in a dark corner of a plant shop and it was still thriving. It was still putting out new leaves, it was doing fine. So this is a plant that can do well in low light. If you put it in really bright indirect light, it will put out these really pretty pink blooms, which I'll show a close up of. And it, you know, it grows faster obviously, because like I always say, even if a plant does well in low light, they will typically do better and thrive in bright indirect light. You can see that I have not staked this one. And I regret that. The problem is that the branches grow out, 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 and it doesn't have enough weight on this side. So when I water it, the soil is wet and the pot is heavy and it stays upright. But as soon as the soil begins to dry out, it teeters over and falls. If you do find this plant, I would suggest staking it. The next one is Silver Squill or Litoborea socialis. This is a wicked cool plant. The leaves have these like leopard spots on them. It puts out little flowers, like these little stems of flowers that are like tiny purple bells. They're so cute. It's an awesome plant and I can't believe like it's so easy to take care of. In fact, this is one plant that did well for me over the winter when my apartment had really low light levels and I started losing my plants left and right. This one just continued to thrive. It was doing fine. And as you can see, it's just out of control. This is a, this is a rad plant. I really like this plant. I think it's super cool and I highly recommend it. Number three, Raphidophora tetrasperma. I just did a video all about this plant in my Meet the House Plants series. This was number one. So if you're interested in finding out all the details, all the care requirements, and my experience with this plant, you can check out that video. But this is such an easy, easy plant to care for. In fact, in some greenhouses, it grows so fast that it becomes invasive. Does really well in low light, will do better in very bright and dry light. Easy plant, easy plant. Looks cool too. I forgot to turn my lamp on. Oh no. <laughs> Whoops. That looks better that way, you know? Hoya Crinkle 8. This is a hybrid from Hoya Carnosa. If you know anything about Hoya Carnosa, it's like the most basic of Hoya. It's very easy to take care of. Everybody seems to have had a grandma with a Hoya Carnosa in her kitchen. And this is just a hybrid of that, so it has the same care requirements. The only difference is that it has these really cool crinkly leaves. It has eight divots in each leaf, which is why it's called crinkle eight. It does fine in low light, but if you want it to flower when it matures, you really need to give it a lot of bright indirect light with all Hoyas, that's usually the case. Hoya crinkle eight, neato plant, easy peasy plant. Get yourself one. What's next, what's next? Begonia dragate partita. This is a really cute little begonia that I found at my local greenhouse. It's also known as begonia papaya, and I'm guessing that's because it puts out these adorable little flowers. 
that are like papaya colored. The interesting thing about this begonia that separates it from all the other begonias in my collection is that it has a very bulbous stem which retains more water. It's called a caudex. It's been very easy to take care of. I have needed to water it a lot, so I think I need to repot this one. But uh, surprisingly, it doesn't require extremely high humidity in spite of the fact that the leaves are very small and very thin. It's doing great in my home. Uh, some people will grow this as like a little bonsai tree. Not me, I don't care. <laughs> if you're looking for something a little different and uh, you know, begonia, you like begonias? Begonia drage partita is a good begonia for you. Before I move on to the next five plants, I just wanna talk about Skillshare real quick. They are the sponsor of this video, for which I am ever thankful. Skillshare is an online community of creative people coming together to just help one another learn and grow and continue their personal journeys. Whether your interest is, I don't know, marketing, or you wanna improve your productivity, or you just wanna doodle, or you wanna take up watercoloring, or some kind of talent that you have within you that you would like to explore, Skillshare is a really good place to do that. There are a few courses that I would like to recommend to you, my viewers, based on you know your Instagram pics or the comments that you've left on my previous YouTube videos. Yes, I do stalk your Instagram accounts. Yes, I do. Painting with Thread, Modern Embroidery for Beginners by Danielle Clou. 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 Something like that. I like this one because I saw that people actually get to share their projects at the end. So if you go to the comments of the class, you can see people's actual projects that they've shared. And it was kind of cool. There is a new one called Finding Success Online, Grow Your Social Following into a Creative Business by Kate Ahrens. I think that this one could be really helpful for those of you who have YouTube channels or who are you know, trying to grow your Instagram following or turn it into a business. I know a lot of you are looking to start opening your own plant shops or things like that. So maybe you would be interested in that. And the last one that I can recommend, which is the next course that I'm looking into personally, Unlocking Your Potential, Five Exercises to Build Creative Confidence by Emma Gannon. For me, I'm a person who has previously really struggled with expressing my creative ideas to other people. I feel very shy sometimes about my ideas. I feel like they're not good enough. Um, and so that is something that I have really worked on, obviously, because now I have a YouTube channel. But even now, I struggle. Sometimes I have ideas, but I'm just a little too timid to actually commit to them and to you know put them on YouTube. So I think that that would be a really good course for me and maybe for you. Anyway, they are constantly adding new courses. I see new ones pop up all the time. It's only $10 a month, but for the first 1,000 people who click the link in my description below, you can get two months free premium membership with Skillshare that gives you access to all of their premium courses, like the ones that I've talked about. And uh, you know, you can start learning. Kickstart your creativity. Find yourself. Hoya Pubiclix. This plant is unstoppable. It's much like Hoya Carnosa in its care requirements, but it just grows insanely fast. Like a year and a half ago, I think I got it as a two or three leaf cutting. Now it's turned into a substantial plant and it's just vining and vining. This plant has plans to go to the moon. That is where this plant is headed. It is impossible to stop. Hoya Pubiclix does have really beautiful blooms. Mine is not mature enough to bloom, so I have never had the opportunity to see them. This one is a Hoya Pubiclix Black Dragon, so the blooms are quite a dark color, but there are different versions of Hoya Pubiclix, and there's really no way to tell them apart until they bloom, because their leaves always look the same. And that's it. Hoya Pubiclix, unstoppable grower, very easy to take care of, does fine in low light, does best in very bright and direct light. Begonia tuberosa. I think that this is an absolutely lovely begonia. It's a hybrid. Most people buy it for its flowers. It has pretty unique and really pretty flowers. But for me personally, I think that the leaves are stunning. I saw it from afar and was like, is that a begonia? It's got these green leaves with an extreme contrast between the color of the leaf and the veins within. And then it has hints of red on the leaves. I just, I just find it to be absolutely beautiful. And the stems have this pinkish color to them. Wonderful plant, very easy to take care of, even as an indoor plant. Marvelous little plant, very marvelous. I highly recommend begonia tuberosa, especially if you're into flowers. They don't like very high heat and they can do very well in low humidity. They have quite waxy leaves. So if you like begonias, but you have a hard time maintaining the humidity levels required for them, or you don't have a terrarium or something, begonia tuberosa is an excellent choice. 
What's next? Come on, come on. Ooh, Hoya Australis. I'm not sure how to show that one because it's gigantic. Okay. This is a really big plant. <laughs> This is my friend Hoya Australis. As you can see, it is actually taller than me. I'm five foot five, or you know, a meter sixty-four. So this is a little, a little higher than that. I bought this. It was less than a meter high, and within a year, it grew to this big. It's faster than Hoya pubicolix. It grows at an insane rate. I constantly have to trim the top because it'll. It just keeps. It just goes and goes and goes. If you want a really fast growing plant, then Hoya Australis is your man. Oh, and it does have really adorable blooms, but mine has not put out peduncles. This plant is probably two years old, and I'm not sure how, I mean, some Hoyas just need a lot of time to mature before they begin to flower. I'm a little, I'm going a little impatient with it because it's been a while, it's taller than me, I give it a ton of light, I put it right up in the window, and it still refuses to bloom. It's like not even threatening. I just think it would be really cool if, you know, it bloomed. It would be cool, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't, I wouldn't cry myself to sleep, right? Chlorophytum camosum ocean. This is a hybrid uh, spider plant, you know, your typical. Hey! Yeah. I told you there would be no pothos or pisa laser typical plants in this list, and I know spider plants are always listed in every top 10 easy peasy plants list ever, but this is the ocean hybrid, which I find a bit more appealing because I am not a fan of spider plants. I'm not usually a fan of like these pointy sharp leaves, like agave for example, not really a fan. This one's kind of so the leaves are thicker than your typical spider plant, so it looks a little less like, you know, David Bowie's hair. It's still, you know, it still has the pretty album marginated leaves. So yeah, it's, it's just as easy to care for as your ordinary spider plant, but in my opinion, it's just a bit more appealing. I don't know. I like it. I like the thicker leaves. Chlorophytum camosum ocean. Easy peasy plant. Now the last one I mentioned in my most recent plant haul. And people were up in arms. I considered it a basic plant. I, I considered it in the same list as like pothos and things like that. Plants that are beautiful. Plants that I have. Plants that I appreciate, but you know, that are just kind of like backdrop plants, you know? They're not very, you know, they're not rare. They're not your super duper special pretty begonias that flash iridescent blue when the light hits the leaves at a certain angle, you know? <laughs> so that's how I considered this plant. Now, here in France, this plant is quite common in garden centers. I have seen it time and time again. And it's known as Epipremnum pinnatum marble planet, but in fact that is incorrect. It is actually Monstera species Peru. And so this was the first plant that I pulled out of my plant haul, which was like a basic plants plant haul. And just the comments were loaded with people like, that's not a basic plant! Because apparently in the US, this plant would cost anywhere between 50 and $100, but I spent less than 10 euros on this plant. Not the case with the Americans. The Americans were not happy. Y'all made fun of me. Y'all were rough. Y'all put me through it. So I apologize to anyone that I offended by both calling this plant by its incorrect name, which it is labeled right here on this sticker by the vendor, and by calling it a basic plant, I, my deepest apologies. Fast grower, easy to care for, doesn't require extreme amounts of humidity, does really fine in low to medium light levels. It's an all around easy plant to take care of. So if it's on your wish list, you know, I'm not saying go out there and spend $100 on a Monstera species Peru, but if it's on your wish list, no worries, it's really easy to care for. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I tried to put together a top 10 list of easy peasy plants from my own collection and that you wouldn't normally see in, you know, your ordinary top 10 list of easy plants when you type it into Google or YouTube or something like that. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see other houseplant related videos, check out my channel, hit subscribe, be friends with me! I'm happy to have you here and I would love it if you stuck around. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon! Thank you to my $10 patrons, Carolyn Green, Charlotte Dawson, Chris Litzkis, Emily, and Jay Kennedy. My $6 patrons, Patty Nash, 
just one. My $5 patrons Miranda Moyer, Laura Wright, Fenner Lamb, Haley, Tanya DeBacon, Awkwardly, Abby Shannon, Spaniel, Ray, Race, Chai, Vibe, Cell, Dot, and Advance Off, Elizabeth, Mary, Crystal, Laugh, Larry, and Meow, and Kayla Man. My $2 patrons Karen, Jordan, Thomas, Abigail, Colin, Renee, Allen, Martha, Childress, Adam, Boo, Kayla, Gukula, Steve, A, and Pamela. My $1 patrons Michelle, A, Lita, Anastasia, Cassandra, Lilith, Michelle, Mike, and Jenny, Seth, and Jesse, Sophia, Jimmy, Garibay, Isla, Lambo, Elizabeth, Valis, Gary, Kyle, Freeman, Wanya, Zang, Elizabeth, Mary, Josie, Sophia, Clark, Michael, Minor, Valhalla, Fasco, Jordan, Jeff, Kayla, Davenport, Lisa, Nick, Nicholas, Curtis, Lexi, Haynes, Lewis, and Mike, Yauda, Melissa, Monstera, Ivy, Dubois, Linda, Thay, Kristen, Fjordal, Meg McConnell, Claire Buck, Meg, Aria Putana, Claire Lynn, and Denise Grimm. Thank you so very much. I hope you have a wonderful day.